Podcast presents the Alien Retrospective Series episode. I uh, I can't wait to talk about this one. I'm along with Ed and Eric. How are you guys doing today? Pretty good. Pretty good, man. How you doing? Up, uh, nice and easy to the left, like always, right? Nice. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's so, the best reply you can give. Yeah, I mean, kind of have to do that. Um, we're going to talk about Alien because it is my personal favorite movie and may, and also my favorite movie franchise of all time. But I know not everybody in the world <laughs> shares this opinion about it. And I want to know what you guys think about this franchise. I want to know what you guys think about the video games, the comic books, and also Geiger's work and the directors as well. So from the movies, the comic books, the video games, and the art, where should we start first, guys? What Wasting should we talk about no first? no time, Jordan, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Arc of the Diver, Sorry. going head first. In. No, 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 I, that's fine. I like Alien a lot. Um, my favorite, one of my favorite video games for Super Nintendo was uh, Alien 3. Um... It was that was just it was a really cool fucking video game to be playing as Ripley, just kind of running through the industrial park or uh, whatever the hell uh, that in, industrial planet that she's that forge uh, factory. Fiora, 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 uh, Fiora one five one. There you go. Sorry, uh, this is this is this is like Lord of the Rings. This is why this is why we have you on here. This is why we're talking about it. It's great. I I like the series. I mean, sci-fi horror is always been like a genre that i i love i mean there's not too too many other sci-fi horrors but almost every single one that there has been i think that i've, I've always enjoyed like you know respectively so you know whether it be like sphere sure. event horizon you know kind of stuff like that is awesome awesome shit and it's just the, the the imagination is just so like like uh it's almost like, like it's like a, it's a sci-fi gothic you know yes Oh, yes, and uh, it's interesting that you put up Event Horizon because that stole a lot from Alien. Um, okay, and, fine. And Sphere. Okay, we'll go with this. And Sphere. Okay, so we'll go with this, Eric and Ed. What is your favorite movie in the franchise? Do you guys have a favorite? Yeah, I, 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 two, Aliens. Yeah, aliens. Uh, that's, my, that's, my, that's my favorite one. Uh, you know, I, I'm not a huge, huge Ridley Scott fan. I'm just going to put that out there right, right up front. Uh, but I am a pretty big James Cameron fan in terms of the kind of filmmaking that he does. And I think uh, 2 is one of the greatest films of all time. It's got one of my favorite lines in the history of film. <laughs> you know, it, it, at the end, when uh, Sigourney Weaver, you know, when she calls the alien a bitch, it's just, it's beautiful. And she <laughs> punches, and she, you, know, you, you know what I mean? Like, it, it's, it's well done. It's, it, it's perfect. Uh, I would say for me, it's 2. 2? Two? Uh, Eric, what about you? Well, it's, you definitely, have one? it's definitely not Resurrection. <laughs> no, um, I would probably say Aliens too as well. Uh, it's just a lot more imagination and a lot more kind of like that that this uh, that gun killer kind of because you already know it's already been set from from the first one. Even though actually it, it's it, you can really flip a coin between the two, Alien and Aliens, because they're both just awesome thrillers. I like a thriller as much as I like kind of like what's around the corner or is it behind you type thing. And one thing that Alien does so well is also the score, kind of, or, you know, the the mood that, that they set in the movie. Just, it's really just creeping through the hallways and just kind of being like, holy shit, what is this thing? I don't know what I'm looking for. I don't know what it can do. All I know is that I got this gun. And I got, and I got, okay. a, hunt, I got a hunt in, a, in this, the confines of my, of my spaceship. Huh. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to be different from you guys. It's not Alien. It's not Alien Resurrection, and it's not, not Aliens. My favorite's actually Alien 3. Okay, it's, that is, no, that, no problem that's, with that. It's a, it's a cool concept. The reason why Alien 3 is great is if the fans or if you guys ever get a chance, it's on Amazon, it's under $20. You can get it in the quadrilogy set that I own, but watch Alien 3, Fincher's Director's Cut. It's 45 minutes longer than the theatrical cut. And you get introduced to characters and backstories that you didn't even know existed in the theatrical cut. See, there you go. The director's and, cut. That's, that's what's missing from a lot of shit. Yes. Um, like here, for an example, in Alien 3, the alien pops out of a dog, right? Yeah. In the director's cut, it pops out of a bull. A bull? 
a bull because one of the things that they establish on this planet is how the hell do these guys eat? This is an abandoned prison planet. Fincher was very, very good on that. So what they did is they actually had farmland. And they used the old-time farmland, you know, with the bull, like go behind the bull and, uh, you know, tear up the fields. Like a plow and, and they, stuff? Yeah, they, and the face hugger attached itself to a bull. Is this in the director's cut? This is in the director's cut, yeah. So so much that is missing out of just regular stuff, too. And, I, you know, that's another weird thing, too, is that it's like you see it more now where in movies where people are just like, oh, we'll just wait for the DVD because there's more to it, the director's cut. There's more yeah. in Batman Superman. There's going to be more in, in the Marvel movies. There's going to be more in, you know, that's like their, their key thing. But for movies like this, just because they make them so, so long sometimes, well, yeah. typ- typical James Cameron, right? Well, yeah, but James Cameron can do yeah. anything he wants. Clearly, we have found that out. Like, my God, that guy makes one movie a decade, and he's a billionaire. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but they're also, beautiful is, movies. They, all they of them are. are. Abyss they is are. amazing. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Fincher in number three also adds new mythology to the alien that we've never gotten before. Like there are two different versions of facehuggers. We find out in Alien 3 that the alien that's inside of Ripley is actually a queen alien. And the facehugger is actually gigantic compared to a normal size facehugger because it has to lay the embryo of a queen. Mm. So that was taken out. And then I don't know if you guys remember it or not a lot, but the biggest change was the doctor, the guy that kind of befriended her that she had sex with, the doctor guy. Yeah, we all know that scene. We know his whole family history. We know he's actually not a prisoner. We know everything about him, and that's predominantly where the 45 minutes is for. It's just him and his backstory. So when his death happens, it's actually deserved and it's earned. Because he sacrifices himself instead of just being attacked for no Jeez, reason. Why? Why would they choose to cut all that out then? I mean, if it's well, it's, it's extra forty-five minutes. They got to cut something out, huh? Well, what happened, guys? Um, and I apologize for talking forever, and because we're gonna talk about other ones too. But what happened with Alien Three is that they did something that uh, they did in the other two movies. They gave it to a director that nobody really knew. Ridley Scott really wasn't popular at the time when Alien came out. James Cameron just came off of Piranha 2, The Spawning, and he just got done doing Terminator, and it hasn't been released yet. So he was still kind of new as well. Fincher has never done, a f- uh, never done a film before. All he did was Madonna music videos. And the studio was on his ass. He never had a script. When they started filming, there literally was no script. Nice. So this poor guy had to do everything, and he, and still to this day, he's the only director in the whole saga that refuses to be interviewed. And if anybody asks him about Alien 3, he stops the interview. He will not talk about Alien 3 because the studio changed everything. Really? And that's, yeah. a, and that's a funny thing because it's not a terrible movie. No, no, I don't. I don't think you would. You would think a movie like that, like a story like that, would mean okay, this movie is going to be terrible. And we've seen some some situations where that has happened, and they've been terrible movies. But that particular Alien Three is arguably the better one. I mean, I per- personally, I like two. We've talked about it, but three is is like I said, arguably one of the better uh, of the of the series. Well, it, well, I mean, anything's better than Resurrection, but I mean. It's just, it's more so that that three just kind of it adds more to this world to this universe that they live in mm-hmm. of of alien yeah. of of where they're at you know and you kind of see just um really how how not even just like one spaceship or one like kind of mining area or you know you you see kind of just what the world is like or what life is like for for humans it's it's just you know, you're you're building to survive, and you're just kind of going to different planets and just kind of harvesting and harvesting. You know, or just oh yeah, it, it's, oh, it's, it's, it's constant it's, 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 yeah. and explore. It, it's a it's just a dark, gritty planet or mm-hmm. this universe, and it's it's just cool. But that's that's very David Fincher too. Like if you think like Fight Club, uh, Gone Girl, uh, what a couple other like he's done he's done a Girl with a Dragon Tattoo. Like they're just dark, dark, dark movies. You know the stories themselves sort of tend to go that way. Like if you look at the scripts and the storylines anyway. But you know his, his the way he does his filmmaking is just is really in your face, real gritty and like very, very, very dark. And oh uh, yeah, and that's yeah. You're you're coming up with sci-fi well, fantasy, Star Wars. You know, which was released mm-hmm. like 
like maybe a couple of years. It, it, it came like a couple of years after it, I think, right? Like uh, Star Wars was seventy seven, Alien was seventy nine. Yeah. yeah, so it came Two out years. a little bit after it, yep. and so you know, in sci fi, you're coming off of movies that were very sci fi fantasy, you know, and then like Star Trek and all that other stuff where it's very playful, you know, and then you get to see this other side of more almost like kind of like a, just a darker but more real kind of. You know, it's not a glamorous. The, like everything is is kind of practical, or just kind of that's where it is. This this future, and it's really cool to just have. Yeah. When they can, when they take a popular idea and completely flip it, you know. Like well, it works. It works for a lot of things, by the way. For for most things, I I still to this day think that they remade Charlie the Chocolate Factory now, but like dark. I think that would fucking easy billion. Uh, what well, they, well, they, they did maybe, it was just maybe campy two, with Tim Burton. Maybe two fifty. <laughs> Two fifty million. I, I think it would it would still do well. I would think. Yeah, they shouldn't have done the Tim Burton one. He's he's. Although I, I would say Tim Burton on. did turn Willy Wonka into the ultimate rebel. His dad was a dentist, and the son becomes the greatest candy maker of all time. <laughs> True. <laughs> True. And he does look like Michael Jackson, so you got that. Mm-hmm. Too. Well, yeah. In the movie, yeah, because I hate that movie. But uh, let's 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 go with Alien on this point. Let's so we now talk about Alien Three. Do you guys know the story of how Alien, the actual script, came about? Do you guys know anything about the history Mm-mm. of this and how we got it? I do not. I'm I'm hoping that you do, Jordan. That's, <laughs> that's a... <laughs> <laughs> smart. What, what smart led you ass. to wonder if he knew the story or not? Sorry, <laughs> I, I, I mean, am. I'm, I'm in, nuts. intrigued though. I mean, go ahead because it's yeah the way that the, like the movie industry works too is so fascinating. Especially when you hear it about like your your favorite movies. Like you don't sure. realize that Caddyshack was just a fuck, you know, horrible thing yeah. to do. And then yeah, like it's it's just cool to to hear the backstory. But so yeah, please share. Okay. Well, what happened is we already we already talked about this this writer slash director in a retrospective series already this year. Dan O'Bannon. He went on to direct mm. such great films as Return of the Living Dead. Yeah. Dan O'Bannon is a racist. Good for him. Well, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> the reason why I'm saying this is this: he writes a screenplay and he calls it Star Beast. Okay. And he writes it because he wants to capitalize off of Star Wars. Because at that point, everybody wants to capitalize off of Star Wars. He writes a script called Star Beast, and there's no black characters, there's no female characters, and there's no android, and there's no company, Mm. right? So the screenplay is passed around through 20th Century Fox for about a year, year and a half. Walter Hill from Brandywine Productions reads the script and says, this is the worst piece of shit I've ever read. He actually (laughs) has gone on record and said that. This is terrible. He then pat, but he gets to a certain part where he is blown away, so he gives it to his business partner. His business partner calls him and says, this is a terrible script. Why did you give this to me? We're never going to make this into a movie. He goes, keep reading. Where are you at? He goes, I'm on page 90. This is in the quadrilogy set, so this is quote. Nice, okay. He says, I'm on page 90. Nothing has happened. This is terrible. He goes, read to page 120. You'll be blown. He goes, 120? That's 120 minutes of a movie. What are you talking about? He, he gets to the chest burster scene, and he's blown away, and that's the only thing. They buy the script. They buy the rights to everything, and that's the only thing they kept was the chest burster. <laughs> that was it because it was so brilliant, they thought, on how to get an alien on this ship. Yeah. You can't have it just sneak on or nothing like that. Pretty much – Kane, the guy in the first movie who got the face hugger, was space raped. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much what happened. <laughs> I mean, that's throat, what happened. Throat fucked into pregnancy. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's why the script was actually terrible, and Dan O'Bannon was threatening to sue 20th Century Fox because he didn't want it to be African Americans in the film. He didn't want the uh, uh, the hero to be a female because that doesn't make any sense. I mean, come on now, women heroes? No. Yeah. <laughs> you know. And all this stuff. And this it was the future, a hun- damn it. Nothing but white men. Yeah. <laughs> but the funny thing is to me, the whole thing, and for all of us who know film. Make space great writing, again. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That one just popped in there. <laughs> That's good. That's Go good. On. That's good. Um, and script writing, it is a page a minute. So Dan O'Bannon's original draft 
was 120 minutes until the chest burster happened. That's ridiculous. Two hours of nothing here, huh? Nothing. I so mean, that's how Alien like, became Alien. What do they What do they do? They, they just like talk about how much they hate women and blacks. Is that pretty much <laughs> it for the first no, no, like, two I mean, hours I mean, of the movie? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I mean, like um, they yeah. do with anything. You yeah, know, they, yeah. You know, they just you know they you know they bought the rights. They bought the rights. To everything paid him quite a bit of money, and they changed everything. Everything completely. The only uh, the only two things they kept. I'm sorry because I watched the, the documentary. The only two things they kept was the chest burster. And the mode, uh, I'm sorry, the mood, the truck drivers in space kind of atmosphere. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That was that was Dan O'Bannon's kind of vision. So that's the only two things they kept. Aren't we glad though that we get the first alien and how slow it is and how you don't know what the fuck is gonna happen? The first alien, I would argue, is better than Aliens because it is it completely changed sci-fi for multiple years. Everybody ripped off of that. Yeah. It's, it's yeah, iconic. I agree with it's, that. It's, it's it's iconic. It's it's put a place into Hollywood history, you know. And uh, no, I hundreds agree. It's um, I will agree because I I think we all can agree that that when you first watch that movie, watching that chest burster scene, you're just kind of like, holy shit, like. That that was just like it just happened because I I didn't expect it when I first saw it you know I'm a kid and I didn't know anything about it, but uh, even like the the crew's reaction is well acted too and they're just they're shocked because when it happens they're like I, I don't know what to do next like yeah, yeah. what do we do <laughs> like what the hell just happened you know oh yeah and and also if you guys rewatched it for the review I don't know if you guys did or not. But when the chest burster pops out and the and the blood spurting everywhere and and like Lambert the other girl is screaming bloody murder yeah n- nobody knew it was going to be that much blood like they all knew the chest burster was going to happen but nobody knew it was going to be that so they squirted her with blood and her reaction was her real reaction and it was wow. majority of everybody that's what you need is that that genuine reaction kind of like where where they dropped down Rickman on Die Hard and that was the genuine reaction because yep. They told him one thing on account, and they they got another. You know, kind of those real reactions really do make a a big difference. And a fake scream is you can you know the difference between a real scream. You know, and it's, yes, there's nothing more than just like a, just a real a real scream. You know, <laughs> when when directors put their actual actors in the harm's way, of course the real the real thing comes out because they're terrible at what they're doing. Oh, their oh yeah. Jobs. Just um, like certain, yeah. some screams just kind of just kind of echo, you know, as like the there should be there's got to be somewhere like a top twenty five great screams or something like that in, in movie history because oh, Watch Mojo probably has it. Yeah, I'm sure. And if Kevin McAllister isn't on there, I'm gonna be disappointed. Yeah. Well, <laughs> to be honest with you, I already knew ah. about the chest burster because um, a year. Okay, so this is what happened. This is how I found out about Alien. Because uh, I remember it very vividly, and because the years, there's a reason why I know the years. In 1996, I saw Spaceballs. My dad showed me Spaceballs. Yeah, <laughs> I see your Schwartz is as big as mine. <laughs> yes, and um, and at the end of Spaceballs, the actual guy Kane is there in the diner, and the and the alien pops out of his chest, yeah. and he sings "Hello, my baby," and he goes away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, the beautiful, brilliant the, mind of Mel Brooks. The, the hat and Kane and everything too. Yeah. And I was I thought it was funny, but my dad was on the floor. Because my dad's already seen Alien and I didn't know what Alien was. And yeah, I just remember him falling to his knees laughing. And I go, What's so funny? He goes, Oh, don't worry about it, right? Yeah. The reason why I know the year is because in nineteen ninety seven, a little movie that we all know, Batman and Robin came out. Yeah. And my dad took my brother and I to go see Batman and Robin. And believe it or not, the trailer that was playing in Batman and Robin was Alien Resurrection. Okay. And I was like, this movie looks cool, Dad. Let's go see this. He goes, yeah, well, fine. We'll go see it. But let me show you this. And that's how I knew of the chest Let me, let me get because, you caught yeah. up, you know? Yeah. So that's why. But, yeah, so Spaceballs was my introduction to Aliens. And uh, wow. that's that's a good a good reason why they actually remake these movies, just, just because it'll be, you know, for new generations. Like, oh, before we go see this, we have to watch the other ones. Mm-hmm. Keep keep this legacy of going. And and so, yeah. Yeah. But So uh, why 
Yeah. Why and, aliens? For you guys, don't mean to interrupt, but you guys both said you loved aliens. You guys said it was an awesome combat movie, blah, 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 but there's something more that you guys really like, though, I feel, that just makes you like aliens more. What is it? it I, I, I'll jump on that one. I am not a huge fan of Ridley Scott. Just not. I, I think, you pointed out, like, this movie's slow. All of his movies are slow. Even, you know, I, I mean, I like Gladiator, and Mastic Men was good from a different point of view. And then, uh, what was the other? Uh, G.I. Jane. I like G.I. Jane only because I thought, uh, uh, I thought she, uh, Demi Moore was extra hot with a shaved head. That, mm. was, that was a little weird. But, but all his movies are extra slow. So, you know, Aliens, you, you get the beautiful filmmaking mind of, of James Cameron. You know, forget about the, the fact that uh, Avatar was Pocahontas just with blue Indians. But you know, his he's really, really innovative. And he took a world that already exist, existed and made it better. And then, you know, you get the... Uh, uh, Sigourney Weaver is a much better actress at this point because before then she had—I don't think she'd done anything. I don't know what she had done. Maybe a couple things here and there, but she's got a little. She's got a few movies under her belt, and the technology's better. And the you know because you get some of the scenes in Alien, which are very innovative for the time, mm -hmm. but you know they're very much like you guys had said. That everybody's trying to piggyback off of Star Wars and, and, and Star Trek. The opening scene where that where the ship comes in is really the opening scene of Star Wars where you get. The, the Star Destroyer coming in. It's really the same thing. So they're trying to piggy, piggyback off of all those things and take what people have seen and, and, and go off of that. Aliens doesn't do that really in my view. I mean, you get there's only so much you can do with a, with a world that already exists, but it, it's, it's a lot more innovative, I think, than the first one. Ah. Uh, well, okay. Eric, do you have something you want to retort before I go on that? No, no, I, I think just the concept is a bit cooler. I, I do like that, you know, hypersleep is a reality in in this world, and she's like, a, I, she's been dormant for like 60-something years or something like that after the 57. first 57. 57 years. And, uh... Sorry, yeah. I'm that guy tonight. No, no, no. You're no, fine. <laughs> get, get it. And then, uh, you know, then she wakes up and she, no one's like, <laughs> believes her about the alien story, pretty much, and... The planet that was, you know, affected is now being terraformed, you know, yeah. which is a really cool thing, too, because we're, we're a species now that just go and colonize on a planet now. Yeah. And that, okay. that, that's pretty dope for me. But I, I just like the, I don't know, the, the cinematography, just the, kind of the overall kind of, uh, what am I trying to look for? The color and the, the mood was a bit more yeah. kind of adventure for me. A little bit more. And, more okay. And, and to piggyback off what you said, what you said, Eric, you know, Sigourney Weaver in that movie, probably because it's been what it was that was seventy nine and eighty six was when Aliens came out. Not only she yeah. had Ghostbusters and a few things under her belt, but um, you know she she goes through the whole first half of the movie going, "What the fuck are you doing? I already told you, stop it, stop it, stop it. What are you?" She goes through the whole movie saying, "I've seen this. Just just cut it out. Just stop it." You know, and, yeah, and, right. and she's just she does it in a really convincing way, and nobody listens to her. And obviously, we understand from the first one that that there's this corporation behind everything. Like they don't really tell you a whole lot, but you 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 understand that there's a uh, there's things going on. There's other aspects going on. There's things at play, and two sort of brings that a little bit together. Like they tell they tell you this they tell you the story a little better. Okay. They, you know, you understand the concepts better. They they go into they're not they're not as vague about it. They 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 sort of are front, up front and saying we're we're just going to make money. We don't really care. We're trying to make we're trying to make money in weapons. Yeah, that's what we're doing. Okay. All right. Well, guys, you, you bring up some very interesting points. Uh, something that you guys may find interesting is that Aliens, the second one, is the only one that has never been designed by Geiger. That's all Cameron's designs. I don't know if you guys noticed the aliens look different in that movie than the other ones. No, no, um, and that's that's what I think. I I, I, I enjoyed it for just be, it being an enter, entertaining movie. Is really what it was. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. but, yeah, as I said before, Aliens like that that horror. Oh, like Aliens is a little bit more more sci-fi action. Yeah. And and uh, Aliens is is definitely sci-fi horror, and that's 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 why the, each one of them, both of them, stand on their own. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just awesome alien yeah. movies, and really, what they—that's really what they have been doing so far with 
all of the movies is is like each one is kind of like their own standalone, you know, different chapter uh, or or different book in the series type thing, you know? Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. no, yeah, I agree. Because you can watch all of them on their own, and just you know, if you have a brief familiarity with with what it is, you could, they could do it on its own, you know, because it kind of starts off the same way. You'd appreciate a lot more, obviously, of watching Aliens because it's just dope as fuck. Like, for for okay. lack of a better term, right there. I mean, I think I think they're pretty dope much as fuck. I think they're pretty. <laughs> that, that movie's fantastic. Like, I you know, but. I don't know. As a as a kid watching it, Aliens was just like a fun adventure. Like, get give me the big guns, give me that mech suit, you know, yeah, uh, the mm-hmm. marine suit type thing with the the yellow bars, and just let's just <clears throat> just walk in there and just blast them. I'm loving it. Now, now I'm uh, I'm assuming from from both your guys' statements that none of you guys have actually seen any of these movies' director's cuts, then, huh? No, I'm no. not. Okay, well, uh, Aliens has a director's cut as well. And uh, that's an extra 25 minutes. And, uh, Ed, to go on what you were saying, that you know more, well, you know Sorry, I wasn't paying attention. More. I was taking a podcast selfie. What did you say? Okay. Uh, you... <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I don't know how to follow up with that. Okay. Um, all right. <laughs> you know how you said how you liked Aliens, Ed, because, because it added more to the story, right? Mm-hmm. Well, in Cameron's director cut for aliens you go to Hagley's hope first you you actually see everybody working alive with their families in the colony that'd be that'd, okay that'd be dope yeah to okay see. and you follow newt and her family you see her mom her dad her brother okay yeah and burke the bad guy that goes down with them actually calls newt's family and tells them to go check out the spaceship from the first alien and they get newt's dad back with a face hugger attached to him that's what starts it all oh okay 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 so yeah so all that was cut out in the director's cut but if you ever are interested of course to the fans to see the director's cut you get all of that in there i i mean i'd be interested to see it just from a film lover's perspective the the only problem I see with that is how how long is it? Because Ridley Scott's movies are just one of those things that like if you're gonna take if Ridley Scott could take four hours to tell you a story he would. No 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 no. This is this is this is Cameron's version. This is the second one. Oh, I thought you said Alien. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you said no. Alien. Aliens. Oh, no, okay. No, no, see, no. Uh, Cameron's director's cut for Aliens is 25 extra minutes. So like oh, okay. the whole Newt family thing is like 10 minutes, and then there's added stuff on. You know, like, we know more about Hicks and Hudson and all those uh, guys. See, there you go. You, so. you did mention those names. I was only three-quarters of the way paying attention because I was too busy taking podcast selfies. I'm sorry. <laughs> podcast <laughs> selfies? Dude, how, Dude I'm going to hashtag that. I'm going to hashtag that. It's going to be a new thing. I think, yeah. Aren't you? Do that. Aren't you, like, aren't you, like, 30? Not yet. Seriously? Dick. <laughs> <laughs> podcast selfies? All right. Do you, buddy. Do you. <laughs> Do you, buddy? Yeah, so, what, uh, uh, let's move it to Prometheus, because I, I wouldn't mind talking about that, yes. too. Yes, yes. Let's move to Prometheus, because I'm watching. Ed, you said you never seen it. I have not. I still... I, I, I planned on seeing it today, um, but, you know, I, I'm going to say this. Knowing what... I, I mean, I have not having seen the movie in its entirety, but having seen the... Knowing Alien pretty well, and then having seen the trailer, and then having seen, like, clips and stuff, the fact that nobody knew that this was a fucking Alien movie until the end blows my mind. Are there things that I'm missing? Uh, Yeah, yeah, you are. It's really not an Alien movie. Eric, would you agree with me on that? I, uh... What? With the... Prometheus... Well, because the the ships are the same, are they not? The ships are the same. Uh, Eric, Eric, tell me, tell me if you think I'm wrong on this. I, I mean, it's it's it, kind of hard to 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 say that it isn't a, you know, I mean, I I understand what you what you're saying, like, uh, but I mean the the death in that movie, the alien in the in the ship, that's that's an alien, right? I mean, there's face grabbers or a face hugger. It's 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 pretty damn close. It is how about, the same how about this? universe. You had said that they're going to just kind of pretend Prometheus didn't exist and then just continue on yep. with the story. I'm okay with that. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> really? I'm completely okay with that. I, I, I had... Watching Prometheus in the theater, I, I enjoyed it for what it was. It was very visually appealing. I had a lot of gripes 
And that that kind of pissed me off. Because you, you ever watch a movie and you're just like, wait a second. Well, if that's the case, then wouldn't you just motherfucking just do this instead? Like, yeah. The, the 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 biologist that was up there, uh, the 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 red tough guy with the with the ginger. I mean, yeah. I, uh, there was a lot of questions I had about him, you know. Yeah, like why is he there? Yeah, that'd be a big one too. <laughs> uh, a big one was was the helmet uh, thing too. Why he just took it off too easy, or, or I there's there's a lot of gripes about the movie. And then they like nobody got along, and you're just like, hey everybody, um, we're this company, this billion trillion dollar fucking company. We really need a team to go do this. Uh, here we go. You guys are all meeting for the first time, uh, and we're gonna send you on this this mission. Have fun, you know. Bring us back the gold, you know. And there they go. No, they yeah. Fly off. And it's just like, wouldn't you like want to make sure these people are cohesive? Like, well, they, here's the interesting thing. I think you guys are gonna find interesting. Eric, you may love this too because this is where they messed up. Yeah. Alien is 23 years after Prometheus. Okay. Okay. Only 23 years, okay? Mm -hmm. And Aliens, between Alien and Aliens, is 57 years. Yeah. So they already had Colonial Marines. Now, I just watched this tonight to prepare for the show. They go to, which is not LV-426, which makes no goddamn sex, a sense. It's which only the LV original planet, right? From 1-2. Yeah. Yes. It's LV-223. But, okay, here's my point. I'm telling you the years. It's 23 years before Alien... And they only bring flamethrowers. Where's the? Why aren't they? Why isn't there a group of colonial marines with them with weapons and rocket launchers and their nukes? And I mean, like they're going on a science expedition, and all they have is flamethrowers. Yeah, you think that there'd be a that better, made a no better sense. projectile, you know, or a line of defense for them to do something? No, made no sense. I do actually like to think though that Shaw. Is a very very good Ripley stand-in. I thought she was great. I, I liked her. It was again, like I said, like there's a lot of parts of the movie I didn't like and or that I didn't did not like. And yeah, but if they want to go ahead and say, hey, uh, let's just pretend that would never happen, I'd be on board with it. Like okay, because kind of the way that I had it envisioned it was not that way. So I I'm, agree. I'm yeah. willing to accept the fact that they wanted to just kind of. Re, uh, redo that one uh, as far as the story goes just because I, I and we're at a point in movies like that now where people can just go up and say hey everyone uh, this is how I see it you know and yeah well cho choose your your one that you want to pick you know if you are if you are this type of faithful if you're the Prometheus faithful or if you're the Covenant faithful you know kind of yeah, which is what I'm worried about. And, Ed, you said you hate Ridley Scott. Eric, you know, I've had this discussion before, but here's something that's shitty. Neil Blomkamp was supposed to do the next Alien film. Eric, you know, uh, Ed, you know who Neil Blomkamp is, right? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No, I don't, uh, actually. He, uh, he directed District 9, Chappie, Elysium. Uh, well, there, that, see, that's why I don't know him, because I fell asleep every time I watched District 9. Uh, okay. <laughs> the, concept wor the concept was a beautiful concept. It just didn't work as a film. I fell asleep well, every time. Well, he was supposed to do the next Alien movie, and it was it was just called Alien Five. There was no title yet, and okay. I was really excited about it because they were forgetting three, four, and Prometheus ever happened, and it's the direct sequel to Aliens. And Sigourney Weaver signed on, the girl who played Newt signed on, and Hicks signed on to do it. They already had concept drawings. They already had a script going. They were going to film this year. There you go. Okay. Ridley what Scott happened? says – Ridley Scott comes in with his big fat dick <laughs> and says – And what a uh, Wait a minute. Yes, yes, because the man did give us Blade Runner, so thank you. But uh, Oh, my uh, God. I hate goes, that movie. Hey. Oh, I love Blade Runner. Anyway, uh, <laughs> he goes uh, – and, and, and this is a quote from the quadrilogy. He goes, hey, 20th Century Fox, time out. Uh, you guys signed on to do three Prometheus films, and uh, you can't do Neil Blomkamp's because I'm contractually obligated to do Prometheus too, so – See a Neil Blomkamp and your idea. I'm gonna do Prometheus too, which they're filming now. Yep. Mm -hmm. I don't know. And it's called yeah, and it's called Alien Covenant. And the story, since Ed, Ed you haven't seen it, Eric, the story is uh, the spaceship Covenant goes to a planet called Paradise, which is the engineer's home planet, and the only living thing there is David the synthetic. Shaw has been killed. 
starring Danny McBride. Danny McBride? Yes. Where does he fit in all that? He's in it. All right. With IMDb. Ed, you know Ed. Ed, you know uh, who uh, who Danny McBride is, right? Uh, I'm I'm trying to rack my brain. Tell me what he what Kenny, he's been in. Kenny fucking Powers. Oh yes. <laughs> yes. He's and down. <laughs> yep. He's in this movie. He's in Alien Covenant, which is coming out next August, 2017. Well, he's been in he's been in a ton of things. Yeah, but he's not an alien. Oh. He's gonna be the comic relief. That just, it, it just relax. Well, I know how much you love this you movie. Know, but... we'll, we'll see because sometimes the the greatest actors are often the comedians. Well, Robin Williams, Brian Cranston. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Right, there you Brian go. Brian Cranston. Yeah, but Danny McBride's no fucking Brian Jim, Cranston. Jim guys. Carrey. I mean, come on. You, nobody knew how good Brian Cranston was until Breaking Bad, and he great. He gave the greatest character arc uh, in the history of the visual medium. All right, Jamie, all right, Jamie, all right. Jamie Fox is another one. There you go. Jamie Fox. Okay. All right. I like him in one movie, but that's okay. I mean, that's just me. Went from a living, <laughs> a living color to winning an Oscar for best actor. So, hey, it me. It's from a living color to any given Sunday. His best performance ever. <laughs> he was, he was really good in that, but he, that was not his best performance. <laughs> it's my favorite football movie. I'm sorry. I I really dig that movie a lot. I think yeah, it's funny. Everyone likes. That Sometimes movie. Jordan, I question your knowledge of film. <laughs> I I am I am I have a raging nerve boner about aliens. I'm putting Eric to sleep, and I'm sure the fans have already turned off by now because I can't shut my mouth. What makes you think I don't know anything about film, man? What do you, what do you think about? It? This is, this is great. Everyone likes Aliens and is excited for it because no matter what Covenant is going to be, people are still going to see it. I am the engineers did intrigue me very much in Prometheus. I, they did. I, they I, did. I, I liked their introduction of kind of what they were and just kind of the mystery behind them. It, it yeah. really all the foreshadowing I actually liked. Like yes, I, I did like the foreshadowing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. I liked uh, the guy Pierce playing uh, just pretty much his role and uh, just big billionaire just. Throwing money at the project, you know. Yeah. Uh, and I just every every part of it was just cool. I just didn't like I like Idris Elba, I like Charlie Theron in, in it. It was it was great. I just didn't like kind of what the characters were doing, and what they were you know just what they were about. They, no, yeah. They they sucked together, and which is kind of like it almost seemed like there there was maybe it was horribly written, and then on set they just said, you know what? No, we're gonna make changes and make this even shittier. <laughs> yeah, probably because because there's a fan theory going around that Charlie Theron is actually uh, an android. Wasn't it? <laughs> like they, I think they just threw out the script and like, you know what, everybody? I think we're just gonna improv this entire thing. Go, you know? Yeah. Oh, and Ed, when Eric and I talk about the engineers, that's the actual space jockey and alien. Okay. Okay. You find out in you find out in Prometheus that the space jockey looks like a human, just a giant human and they created humans and they, they created, created life they created they life. created life they created life and they were on their way to earth with the alien eggs so to speak to destroy mankind essentially okay. that's kind of the gist of it they're, again they're I, I think they're a pretty cool concept yeah. i'd like to see a little bit more of them and see what's going on but now yeah, everybody – now, uh, Eric, you brought up about the games. Has anybody here but me played Alien Isolation? Played Alien versus. Predator. I've never played it. You yeah, guys, I've played that. <laughs> you guys got to get Alien Isolation. I can't put it down. They've, they've – Well, I, I saw you on Xbox Live earlier playing it. Oh, my God. <laughs> I was playing The Division, and you were playing, you were playing that. Oh, my God. You guys have not you, – you guys got to play this game. This game, oh my god, this game's so great. This game is seven years after Alien, and you're playing as Ripley's daughter, Amanda. Okay. Okay. Which, which, which is not, which is not just shoehorned in because in uh, yeah, Alien, yeah, because because in Aliens, James Cameron's movie, that's another scene that got cut out in the director's cut. Is she? Um, it's been 57 years, and you know they they unfreeze her. And she found that her daughter died of old age, Amanda Ripley. They already said Amanda Ripley and all this other stuff. Oh, okay. 
So, so, so it wasn't just like foobarred in, like it was like part of the actual world. But you are playing as Amanda Ripley. You're 22 years old, first person, and it's seven years after Alien, and you're trying to discover where your mom is. You're trying to find out where the Nostromo is. That's, that's, and cool. You, that's cool. And you are on a space station with just one alien and no weapons. Ugh. That sucks. <laughs> and, all you, and all you can do is hide. There's barely any maps. There's barely any humans. You have the motion tracker from Alien and maybe a flamethrower here and there. And that's it. When you hear the alien come, you have to hold your breath. You have to hide. If you make one move, he finds you, you're dead. I've already died 200 times. It's ridiculous. Nice. That sounds like Clock Tower. You ever played Clock Tower? No, I haven't. Oh, my God. One of the greatest games of all time because you have no weapons. You have nothing. Are you, gonna, you just hide from the giant guy with the fucking metal head and scissors. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. Yeah, kind of the same <laughs> thing then. Yeah, pretty much. I don't think those, the, that's that's a pretty cool concept for a game. I would definitely check that out. I like sneak sneak fucking movies like or sneak games like that. A lot of the games that I play, you know, I, I like to kind of be stealthy or, or ambush or something. Well, and, Eric, uh, you may love this because I know you're a game guy. You know how when you die in a game, like especially well any game, but you how you die in a game multiple times, you kind of figure out the bugs of the game, and you know, hey, if you go left, you won't get shot, right? Right. Yeah. In Alien Isolation, the AI is ever-changing. So nice. if you move left and the alien gets you, well, you're not going to move right. The alien's going to come get you if you move to the right. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, there's no way to actually cheat the game. Oh, really? It's, is it – I mean, is it just that or is it like RNG? Well, it's – it's um, like I'm going to say it probably has like – like let's say in one mission you die like 20 times. It has like 20 different moves. You know, so like, so like, if you're hiding behind a chair and you move to the left and the alien kills you, if you move to the right when you respawn, the alien's still going to get you. So you have to kind of figure out how to get out of that, of, get be out from behind the chair. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it has, it, I mean, like, it's not ever ending, but it has like a bunch of different AI stuff to where it's not the same thing every single time. I'll check it out. It's on for, is it a PC? Uh, PC, Xbox, Law, uh, Xbox One, 360, PS3, PS4. Um, did, that means, uh, do you guys play Colonial Marines then? That came out a few years ago. Oh no, I have, I have played it though. That's one where you can pick between uh, what human, alien, predator. No, that's just alien versus predator. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, Colonial yeah, Marine, uh, no, no, Colonial Marines, where it, you can pick the role, right? Either Colonial Marine or an alien, right? Clone Marine or Alien, yeah, yeah, that one you can. But you have Alien versus Predator too. I don't know if you guys played that one or not. Yeah, I played that one. That one's pretty good. I, that that whole the old series too, where it was like Terminator versus RoboCop. That was a yeah, that's kind of lame one too. But yeah, that was a stand-up arcade that I used to play a lot. Ate a lot of quarters. Okay. Okay. Well. Okay. Good. All right. And uh, I guess the last thing I want to talk to you guys about was. I'm excited because uh, in two weeks I'm gonna buy it on Amazon for thirty bucks. But we have the graphic novel alien comic book being released finally after years you guys ever read these comics no i'm assuming not yeah. no <laughs> all right so no, I comics own, stuck to superheroes i own a few comics and the comics are right after aliens and it is newt and hicks going against the aliens ripley's not in them really I, like you think where we yeah. get around after a while i'm like hey these aliens are becoming a threat, everybody. Like, we can't just keep well, on bringing back Ripley every every so often. And yeah. Just... Well, see, now the comics are interesting because the comics were approved by James Cameron, which I thought was interesting is that uh, Newt is in an assailant asylum <laughs> on, uh, on Earth because she has nightmares of her family being killed by the aliens, which I guess that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And Newt, and, and then, I'm sorry, that was Newt, and then Hicks is on this vendetta to kill every single alien because of what they did to his team. Well, he breaks her out of uh, out of the asylum because she has now this is where it gets weird. She gets um she has a psych she has a a psychotic uh, I can't talk about it. Um she has some sort of connection with the queen alien and that's how they find the queen alien and destroy the hive. Okay. Okay. That's the comics. 
I, and that lead, yeah. I mean, I think that like that would like be making for a good uh, Netflix series soon. Yes. A Netflix series? Yeah. I don't know about that because it's not really good. <laughs> By the way, just throwing this out there, because, Jordan, you gave us access to the Twitter account and everything, I totally just made podcast selfie a thing. You should look it up. <laughs> oh, my Jesus. <laughs> well, guys, look, I know we're not seeing a new movie because, you know, predominantly we, you know, we review newer movies that are out. But Alien is just one of my favorite franchises, and I don't know if you guys felt the same way I did about it. And I just kind of wanted to um, – you know, talk to you guys about it, see what you guys liked, what you didn't like about it. I mean, is there anything else you guys want to add to this actual uh, franchise? Would you guys like to see anything new? Um, you know, I honestly, I mean, there, there's not a whole lot you can you can change to this. I mean, it's very iconic. I mean, I'm being nitpicky, but god damn, these are such such good movies. I mean, I'm, I'm not a fan of Ridley Scott's filmmaking for the most part. I mean, it works out in a, a lot of his movies, and the same, you know, and, and then the other half it doesn't. Um, this, this move, these movies, all of them together, I mean, granted, I hadn't seen Prometheus. So sue me. Um, but, you know, I these will. movies... That, yeah, 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 these you're, movies... You're okay. like, yeah, yeah, I'm fired. These movies, they changed the way sci-fi was looked at, and they changed the genre. We 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 talked about it in the. I don't know. If, I don't remember if it was earlier in the in the podcast or before we started recording, talking about some of the video games like you know, Dead Space, Sphere. Oh my God. You know, like you know, like the, the thoughts of those movies. You know, and I mean, the first one itself didn't have a lot of you know jump out and scare you moments. You know, wh- except for when uh, Sigourney Weaver's in the the the. Uh, the escape pod and the aliens in there too and but the two had a lot of jump out moments three had a few jump out moments you know even alien versus predator like it, the fact that it was like the the argument i don't know if you guys had had it but at, I, I as a kid i would I, I had to fight with all my friends who would win in a fight alien or predator and then they made the movie well that even movie we, sucks it, well, it, it's not a good movie by any means but it's a predator movie but then they, they add alien and it's like oh okay so now alien's a good guy but you know, it's it, the series itself really sort of transcend transcends filmmaking. I mean, it, it, film as we know it, it it it, re-des- it redeveloped and redesigned sci-fi the sci-fi genre. I would agree. I would agree. Eric, you have anything that we want to add to that? I think that uh, they should have kept going with the Alien series as if it were. Uh, kind of like a, a predator, or um, maybe like a, like a Jason type thing, because they you could like I said before you could can continue to keep it going as its own separate events. Like I mean, aliens don't need to be centralized to one threatened area or one threatened galaxy. There we've already known now that they have been spread across all over. Yeah, you know for for so you can keep on going and make different situations, and I think. That you should do that. Make continue the franchise, grow it a bit more. Don't kind of try to overstep whatever the hell you're trying to do on Prometheus. But like, yeah. kind of keep doing what the how the formula has been going. You know, like make make it so that it's a future. It's whatever the hell kind of uh, environment you want it to be. And aliens break out, and you gotta kill them. Like you can make the whole face grabber or face hugger. Th- I keep on saying grabber. They can make the face hugger <laughs> thing. And, uh, you know, just kind of keep it going. But the way they did in Prometheus, where, where we came to them, was meh, you know? Yeah, I didn't like that. I didn't like that at all. But you guys may like this. This is the one thing I wanted to try. Uh, we just we just going to try it tonight. If you guys like it, cool. If you not, whatever. I wanted to see our opinions to close out every show with the worst movie you've seen of the week. And uh, let you guys think about it. I saw one today. Pride, oh, Prejudice, and Zombies. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. How'd you like uh, it? Or you, you didn't like it, I guess, huh? I turned it off in the first 30 minutes. I thought it was terrible. It was the worst movie I've seen of the week. It was bad. <laughs> it was bad. Like, you know how, like, Abraham Lincoln Vampire Slayer was kind of fun and cheeky? I thought this is what it was going to be, but it wasn't. I did not have no. a good time with this at all. It was not good. Did, did, did any of you guys have a shitty movie of the week or the past couple weeks? Oh man, uh, you know I, I, I can't I try say to, that I have. I try to do my best to not watch shitty movies, 
And uh, <laughs> is it? And it's it's just good because you know when you go to the movie theater, you have an idea of what you want to see. You know, in today's day and age, you're like, I want to see this. You know, and yeah. You, you go and it's it's whatever. But uh, no, other than that, you you kind of do the whole Netflix thing. I I don't judge me if we're gonna if it's not. Movies, no, yeah, but, just... but TV. But I, I had watched The Ranch on Netflix. Uh, Never heard of it. It's it. What did you a, think of that? It's a new show with Ashton Kutcher and uh, what's his name, Master. Oh, it's pretty oh. much the, the guy who played the the guy who played the cool man in. Uh, I thank you for show. smoking. Oh, that what it is? No, no, it was pretty yeah, much Ashton just... Kutcher and uh, Charlie Hyde. Hyde, Hyde. Yeah, it's pretty much show. it's pretty much Kelso and Hyde show. It's uh, yeah. not a, it's not a good show. I would not recommend watching it. Uh, no, I, I think I'm I think I'm gonna stop watching it actually. I and uh, switch to switch to Daredevil. I finally get caught up and watch Daredevil instead. Okay. Uh, yeah, you know what? I'll go. I'll piggyback of you uh, for the second time tonight. I've been watching a lot of Daredevil. Um, and a lot of Arrow. I've not. I had not watched Arrow before Netflix. I had not watched Daredevil before Netflix. And uh, I did it backwards. I watched Daredevil first before Arrow. That was a mistake because they they tie them in a lot. Um, I I would highly recommend both of those series if you if you like to watch them. Um, I would uh, relatively agree with you that The Ranch is uh, not all that good. It, it it's basically that '70s show set in outside. Uh, Suburb, not even suburban. It's bad. In it's bad. very bad. rural Denver, very rural <laughs> Denver. Really? And yeah, and you know, I, I mean, I, I'm going to coin a term here that for a lot of people are, will either like or dislike. Somebody like me, I'm a hood billy. I, hood I'm, billy. I'm a I'm a hillbilly from the hood. From the, the hood? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and I in Pennsylvania. What hood is in Pennsylvania? Bro, fucking <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm swearing now. Uh listen. <laughs> Pittsburgh, Erie, Sharon, Pennsylvania is nothing but it's nothing but a poor people. All right. I you didn't know what know I that. mean? I and know you know it, it it really is is I mean it's not the Chicago hood, it's not, you know, a hood from New York, but it's like uh, you know, it's basically people who who Hold on, stop. Who, what did you just say? Yeah, an accent there. What, New, New York? York. What'd New you York. say? New York. Whatever, you're gay. Oh, stop. <laughs> <laughs> Forget about it. Jesus. <laughs> no, but, you know, it's, it, you know, it's what, yeah, that show to me doesn't work either. I mean, it's just, it, you, people, it, there's a thing now because country music is popular, so they're trying to make country popular. Yeah. Doesn't exist. Whatever. Well, Carrie Underwood. Carrie Underwood what, got popular. You want to watch a movie... How about this? I'm looking on Netflix right now. They have they have the Phantom on there. Billy Zane. Mm. Oh, I love that movie so much. <laughs> I love it. It's so bad. It's so good. <laughs> Dude, wow. Everyone, go check out the Phantom. Billy Zane yes. in a purple suit, living in the jungle. Yes. Chris, uh. Christy Swanson and Kevin Zeta Jones sexing it up real hard on the screen. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, uh, fans, we have some things coming your way here. Uh, our next episode is going to be the Avengers special episode. And what that one is going to be is we're not only going to talk about the Avengers movies leading up to Civil War, but we're going to talk about all the individual uh, Marvel movies that have come out before that leading up to it, starting from Iron Man all the way up now until Civil War, leading up to our Civil War review. And I'm going to be uh, – I've been working on it for a week. I'm going to post it next week for everybody to read. But I have a little, uh, I have a little versus post that I'm, that I'm writing where it's movie theaters versus TV, how how theaters are dying and how TV is succeeding. Yep. Mm. Because one of the things that I do in the argument for you guys to think about is this: if you look at TV nowadays, it's pretty much all aimed towards adults, and majority of the movies are all aimed towards kids in theaters now. Majority, not all. And I think that the theater's become more of a family-friendly kid place where TV has become this adult It's, it's thing. more than just a movie. It's a big night out. Exactly. I look, I look forward to reading that. So I'm going to be posting that, too, sometime this week. But on for MovieGuysPodcast.com, guys, this is uh, Jordan with Eric and Ed. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And we'll be back soon with our Avengers, because I know Eric would be excited to talk oh, about really that. I'm excited about hmm? that one. So, and Ed, I don't know if you are too, right? I don't know if you're... Oh, I love the Avengers. I love the Avengers. All right, so we'll talk about those movies leading up to Silver War, guys. Other than that, have a good night. Take care. Later. Peace.